Markets this week were crashing. On Thursday, April 3rd through Monday, April 7th, the Nasdaq entered a bear market, 20% below its recent highs. And the financial markets writ large had their worst decline since the infamous Black Monday of 1987. Then, on Wednesday, April 9th, the financial markets came roaring back with the second largest single daily gain on the Nasdaq since 1971. Even after some smaller declines on Thursday, the QQQ still finished up the week nearly 50 points. My name is Jake Schneider, and I'm the founder of Atlas Analytics, where we're pioneering the use of satellite imagery to conduct macroeconomic forecasting. In short, we predict GDP ahead of government releases using data from outer space. As my first boss, former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan would say, the irrational exuberance of the markets has been replaced with fear. But is this fear justified? According to our Remote Orbital Yield Algorithm, or ROY, we already have a forecast for Q1 2025 GDP before the Bureau of Economic Analysis releases it on April 30th. We're predicting GDP will be nearly flat with a headline number of 0.6%. How do we arrive at this number? Utilizing the power of the Landsat satellites that orbit Earth daily, Atlas Analytics tracks the weekly micro fluctuations of the business cycle and distributes these updates to a select group of our partners. Breaking down this GDP forecast further, we see three components that sum the Atlas Analytics core prediction of 0.6%. First, core GDP is the key statistic that Atlas Analytics tracks. Core GDP is the analog of core inflation, the Fed's key metric for evaluating price increases by subtracting out volatile food and energy costs. Likewise, core GDP subtracts out the volatile GDP categories of private inventories and net exports. At last weekly reading, we tracked core GDP at 3.45%, showing that domestic consumer still rather strong. Second is net exports. This is the difference between exports and imports. This is tracked using a regression model and is at negative 3.17% per Q1. Third is private inventories. This is the increase or drawdown by private firms of their inventory stock. Again, we track this using regression and estimate this at 0.3%. Finally, the sum of these numbers, 3, 4, 5, negative 3.17, and positive 0.3 result in a headline statistic of 0.6%. How does this compare to other estimates? Interestingly, the Atlanta Fed's GDP Now Nowcast has largely converged with our continued forecast of a flat GDP for Q1 2025. The original model is very negative but their more accurate and gold-adjusted model for Q1 2025 is at negative 0.3%. This value is not too different from our estimate of 0.6%, and I suspect they will revise it ahead of the April 30th release further. They've done this every quarter since Q3 2024, since I speculate they receive a pre-released embargoed version from the BEA about two days ahead of time. Even more interestingly, the New York Fed's GDP nowcast is saying 2.6% for Q1. How can two similar banks from the Federal Reserve System have such different forecasts? Alice is in the middle, but the Atlanta Fed's projection is a little bit closer to what we're thinking is realistic. So what does this mean for the fear in the markets currently? Is the U.S. in a recession? The National Bureau of Economic Research, the NBER, is the organization that officially demarcates U.S. recessions, and it does this based on a definition of a broad-based decline in economic activity. In layman's terms, a recession is two quarters of negative economic growth. First, based on the MBER definition, this likely flat or slightly negative print for GDP in Q1 is not broad-based, largely due to net exports. Strike one. Second, even if this quarter does have a negative number, last quarter was revised up to positive 2.4% growth. Strike two. So are we in a recession? I humbly would say no, or at least not yet. It may feel like we're in a recession, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. At Atlas Analytics, we're utilizing real-time satellite imagery to keep an eye on the economy, and we'll keep you updated as the Trump tariffs of the resulting pain and gain to the economic financial markets play out. Want to learn more? Become a premium subscriber to my Substack at atlasanalytics.info to receive weekly updates from the satellites on the state of the U.S. economy. Want the data? Contact me at atlasanalytics.com to gain access to our data solutions.